Good morning, folks. It's Cody Nelson, Cover Crop Kings. Let's talk a little bit about tillage today. Just got done taking down a fence here on the neighbor's field, running some cows out on these stocks before we got it worked up. And we are in full destruction mode. What is actually going on? Let's talk about some of the myths with tillage. One of the big myths is it helps the water function or cycle better through the soil. We've absolutely proven that to be false. What we do is we pulverize this soil and then it packs in the spring those heavy rains. We actually dramatically decrease our water infiltration through tillage. We create that plow pan down underneath this tillage. And, and then we, we take all the soil aggregates out. Those roots are building soil aggregates. That's why we wanna have a living root in the ground as long as possible. And we, uh, by tilling them up, we actually release that carbon back into the atmosphere and we lose those root exudates. We lose, um, we lose all the functioning that was happening with our roots and with our, with our plants and, and we just completely disrupt the system. Uh, we, God made a perfect system before. Uh, we need to figure out a way to, to utilize that system and work with it instead of always fighting against it. Let's talk about disease a little bit. Oftentimes with tillage, we bring disease up, especially some fungus. Uh, if, we can, if we can keep that in the ground and we can keep that soil covered, we can actually hold that fungus in the soil and, and grow better crops upright. So not only are we, are we getting better water infiltration, think of those roots dying and decaying and then them water. Uh, when we get heavy rainfalls, we'll be able to maintain water up there. I want to take you down here. Look at the slope we got right to the river. We do got to get a buffer in there. It, flo it flooded this year. Uh, so it, I got to reseed it again. But anyhow. So anyways, back to the, we got the water. Uh, better infiltration with, with no-till and cover crops. Um, we've got less disease with no-till and cover crops. Uh, we will... Basically, uh, we, what about soil temperature? That's one, one thing I always hear, soil temperature. Got to get that ground warmed up in the spring. We got to get it black. Well, as we've done this, if you were just going to leave it like this and not have something growing, yeah, you might be a couple days back. You know, you might be off maybe even as much as five days off in, in next spring. But let's face it, this is going to get planted to beans. Uh, even five days, I think we'd have been fine. Especially with all the benefits we would have had. I would have came in here and just planted rye. Maybe we should have broadcast rye and let the cows work it in as they grazed it. But, uh, so, the ground temperature. If we, get, if we get a living cover crop growing out here in the spring, we're most likely going to be right on schedule. Uh, even... Even if we're, we may be a day behind, but highly unlikely. So what about excess moisture in the spring? Well, our soil is functioning better uh, through the use of no-till and cover crops. So we've got better, better water infiltration. If you've got uh, some really heavy, wet soils, it really helps to have something living and growing in the spring. Uh, so, so that's when we want to make sure we've got some winter annuals out there. Uh, winter rise said to be to use a, an inch of rain a day throughout the month of May. So it'll really sub, suck some moisture out of your soil. It'll really help you uh, help you to, to get into some of those wetter areas. Just look at these. This ground's really wet. We've had a lot of rain here. Here we go. See, there is... Virtually no aggregates. Nothing. No worms. The earthworms is kind of our gauge for biological activity. As you can tell, 
there's very little biological activity out here which is why you know i always hear this too what are we going to do with that 200 bushel corn residue or they call it trash i i, I prefer to call it residue uh, i think it's kind of like gold actually it's carbon so what are we going to do with all that residue well when you build up your soil biology which doesn't take that long it'll be gone faster than you'd like when you start to start to change the way you farm you start seeing that your crop residue decreases much faster and then you got to start figuring out a way to increase the carbon that you're growing but just starting out if you just came out here and planted rye um, or triticale or something like that maybe rye and vetch would be a good one a little late up here in central minnesota but but uh we're it's october 29th by the way uh, so you know just getting rye out here say you come in here with the no-till drill uh let the no-till drill kind of do your tillage and then let the rye roots do your tillage you'd be amazed at that rapid speed of uh, or increase of biological activity next spring uh, when you come out to plant beans into that rye you'll have very little residue left and and by next summer uh, midsummer by the time uh, the, the the rose canopy um, you'll still likely have some cover but I mean you, you'd be surprised it would be nothing like you'd anticipate probably not as much as as you'll want at some point in time we want to keep that ground covered so we can keep that soil temperature uh, functioning later into the summer that's going to help to increase uh, biological activity which is which is going to help with nutrient breakdown and of, of the crop residues and going to help with that next cash crop so that's kind of some of the main ones we've we've used up some excess moisture in the spring uh, by getting those living roots grown in the spring we've also increased uh, soil temperature so you know those are some those are some of the two of the biggest ones water uh, i think i i think uh oh compaction let's talk about compaction i mean we're actually creating compaction here we're we're taking the cover away we're, we're making that soil exposed and we are letting the rain hit it directly we're right here you got some cover that rain's not gonna rain is one of the biggest causes of compaction so we've uh, got a lot of things we can we can fix through the use of of cover crops and let's just call it biological farming or regenerative farming uh, but we got to move away especially from this fall tillage uh, this is very very detrimental uh, it's 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 hard because it's something we've always done and i'm not saying they were wrong we didn't have the right tools even 20 30 years ago i you know i always hear oh we tried it and it didn't work well you don't have the technology that you have today we didn't understand how cover crops worked then like we do now i i'm not a huge believer in no-till by itself uh maybe in some areas it does make sense but it, in a lot of areas you really got to have those cover crops you got to have those added roots they're all tools in the toolbox but you gotta you gotta have them to help make no-till and kind of regenerative farming work so uh there's a there's a lot of good benefits we can get from from no-till and cover crops and and soil health principles getting livestock out here is really going to help increase the biological activity so we i actually thought we were going to have be able to have cows out here quite a bit longer uh we've just been out here for a week and i guess he's worried he's got to get got to get that ground worked up so um which that's i'm not saying he's wrong i want to get i want to make that make that straight i've been trying to educate him uh it takes more than one person i know there's a lot of you out there that are that are helping to spread the word and we just got to keep it up keep up the good fight uh we'll we'll help we got to remember we're trying to help farmers make more money we're trying to help them improve and increase profit and all while improving uh, improving the the system i mean improving uh the making a better env environment improving the environment so we want clean water folks we want healthy soil and we want wealthy farmers um you know we want to we want to create that i i honestly think a lot of the reason we still do tillage is because people just enjoy to do it and they don't understand how negative it is but i do i appreciate the text and the and the comments and the i get i get emails all the time um but but uh, a lot of text messages from guys at least now they know what they're doing is wrong 
they just haven't uh, built up the courage to be the first one in their area to do something different and and it does take some courage because there's there's a lot of things that can that can affect you'll kind of lose some friends i know i got a text the other day saying all the neighbors think i'm nuts because i haven't pulled the ripper out yet all i've been doing is drilling well you got to be willing to be that neighbor you know they'll come they'll come asking over time especially when they see that it's working um you know especially if if uh, your yields are maintained if they see more semi loads coming out of your fields than theirs they'll they'll start to listen but right away they're definitely going to talk about it in the in the coffee shop and ask when your farm sale is and and whatnot and you might just be best to stay out of the coffee shop but maybe we all we always say that but maybe we need to go to the coffee shop go tell them all what we're doing tell them why why we're doing what we're doing educate them go to them uh, for years we've tried to stay away from them but i think it's time to head their direction so uh, go ahead and like our page uh, like the video subscribe to the page we uh, i appreciate it and i'm going to let him finish this field and i got rye to deliver so uh give me a call give me a message thanks a lot bye